Welcome to the Alertus webinar series. My name is Jamie Underwood, Director of Marketing Communications at Alertus Technologies. Today's session will cover emergency mass notification integration, an important step in building a successful and comprehensive unified facility notification system. We ask that you please hold all questions to the end of the webinar. However, feel free to type any questions in the chat box during the presentation and we'll be sure to come back to those during the Q&A at the end of the session. This webinar is being recorded, so please email marketing at alertus.com if you're interested in receiving a recording of today's webinar. I would now like to turn it over to today's webinar presenter, Alertus' National Sales Director, Brian Oakley. Thank you very much, Jamie, and I appreciate everybody joining us this afternoon. Uh, we're going to go through and talk about a lot of the innovative alerting endpoints and integrations that we have for your uh, network to be able to get the word out very quickly and efficiently. Integrations include anything from mobile to speaker systems, fire alarm panels, uh, to LED marquees, to your uh, to even your uh, digital signage systems. We'll also cover the uh, the Alerta system in introduction for those that are new to the Alerta system. So thank you for joining us this afternoon. For the presentation overview, we're going to talk a little bit about unified facility notification, how that differs from some of the notification uh, solutions that are out there. Leveraging emergency notification components, what are the different components that we can integrate and bring into here? The Alerta solution overview, bringing all that together, and then we'll go through since the focus is on interoperability, we're going to go ahead and talk about some of those interoperability, some of those integrations that we have, and how we can bring those existing assets that you have, you've invested in, that were installed as maybe part of the, the uh, capital construction of the building, that we can then bring into your notification capability to round it out and give you a very quick, efficient way to activate. And then we'll finish with a demo. I'm going to, I know you've, if you've seen these uh, webinars in the past, You've seen quick activations through panic buttons, uh, USB, desktop, those kind of things. We're actually going to go a little bit more in depth and I'm going to be able to show you how you can set up those integrations to be able to activate them on the fly very quickly. You can either build them as part of your presets or I'm going to go through and show you some of the ways that you can select specific integrations, specific uh, activations as part of, a, part of a custom activation. So what is unified facility notification? Unified facility notification is a comprehensive emergency alerting solution that notifies individuals across facilities. That's important. We're sending the message to the facility. Uh, anybody that's in the building, no matter whether they've got a cell phone to receive text messaging, whether they're getting uh, pushes from the local municipality, uh, those kind of things, county government, that kind of thing, they're in your building. So you've got that piece that you can control. So if you can deliver that message to the building, you're going to hit everybody that's in those buildings. This is very different than personal notification, which is going to send out an SMS, phone call, text message, maybe even an email to notify individuals. You're not really sure where those individuals are usually. Uh, they're associated with your organization. They might be on the other side of the country. They might be on your campus. So think of facility notification really targets that. Uh, it works in concert very well, and we'll talk a little bit about the integrations with personal notification uh, that brings and ties those together so you've got a very efficient way to notify both those that are on campus, your locations, and those that are off as well. Notification challenges that facility-based notifications help to solve. You know, if you've got locations with no way to notify individuals, we can retrofit those locations, either with alert begins, LED marquees, visual audio, audio notification capabilities. Uh, if you've got any buildings that aren't staffed 24-7, you don't have a security agent to get the message out, to jump on the, the loudspeaker, to uh, you know, evacuate those kind of things. You need to be able to deliver that message to activate um, and um, be able to get people to evacuate, do whatever you need them to do, but not have somebody there 24/7. Special needs individuals. This is the audio-visual component. We provide very good compliance there. Loud environments. So a lot of times uh, your PA speaker systems, those kind of things, they are good. But then when you get into a loud manufacturing environment, something like that. The, the sound just gets drowned out. Also, if cell phones aren't allowed, you don't have those personal notification methods, or if they're, uh, you've got difficulty tracking visitors, uh, tracking their cell phones, those kind of things, the, delivering the notification of the facility ensures that everybody within your building are notified. And kind of thinking about it, you've got all these different components. You've got things out there like a fire panel. You might have some PA voice speakers digital signage systems, there might be multiple digital signage systems uh, 
VoIP telephony systems, like your your uh, uh, phone systems throughout the building, text messaging, email, uh, even the mobile devices. Everyone's bringing a Android or Apple device to work. How do we reach out and bring those as part of an integrate as well to bring those all together? Plus, you know, with here, you see all the puzzle pieces there. As an emergency manager, as somebody that's in charge of activating these things, a lot of times these aren't all integrated together. You've got to go and integrate each or uh, activate each of the digital signage systems separately. You've got to have somebody lined up to be on a PA system, and you know you want to make sure you choose somebody that can smooth, can speak very smooth, very consistently, uh, very easy tone to uh, to avoid panic, those kind of things. Uh, you've really got to bring all these things. You got to update the website. You got to talk to somebody in marketing communications. You really bring all these things down, boil them down to one point of activation. With what the key to this uh, webinar is, is integration. And part of integrating all these things, the what you're able to achieve is that you're able to activate very quickly and efficiently. A lot of the organizations we start working with, when we actually talk about and find out how long does it take to activate. Many times, if they're honest, sometimes they'll say 30 minutes, sometimes 40, an hour. Uh, some have gotten it down by a lot of practice, down to 10 or 15 minutes. But when you look at it, seconds count for things like tornadoes, active shooters, some of the things that if you're able to get that message out very quickly and efficiently, one touch, that you'll be able to save lives. And that's by you know activating anything from SMX, text messaging, mobile phones, uh, outdoor sirens, indoor PA systems, upside, uh, updates to the website, all those things from a touch of a button. So here, we're the, really the idea is the leverage emergency notification components. You've got audible notification. That could be any of the uh, either sounders, strokes, uh, voice systems, those kind of things. And then you've got visual, which is actually the strobes. Uh, could be your desktop PCs, LED marquees, those kind of things. And really the key to using all of these different components is to educate and engage your audience. So educate them of what's happening, why they should know, and then how they should react and where, where they should go uh, based upon the emergency. Because that's really what people uh, strive, strive for or look for during an emergency is, all right, this is happening, I know what's happening, now what do I do to protect myself? Any kind of guidance you can provide will avert loss of life, uh, any kind of panic, that kind of thing. So that the alert system really provides you the ability to deliver that message very consistently. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the codes. This is driving a lot of uh, mass notification. And overall, in general, National Fire Protection Association has added in their NFPA 72 code book mass notification. This was added in 2010, has been expanded out and continue to be defined. So more and more for your large, high occupancy buildings, NFPA is starting to address mass notification. If you're at a uh, DOD facility, that's fully uh, sanctioned and uh, under the unified facilities criteria. And then if you're a higher ed institution, uh, one of the few industries where actually notifying has become the forefront and has been part of a uh, evolution of an act, uh, legislation, the Clery Act, which, no, which requires all, uh, all higher education institutions to notify very everybody very quickly and efficiently when there's an emergency on campus. And a lot of times what's at stake there is federal funding, which could be a very big source of funds and also fines uh, if they're not notified appropriately. So there's a, a combination of uh, a lot of different you know, code bodies, legislations, those kind of things that are really driving this. But I also want to note that you know, we're, we're also seeing it's not just the code that's driving the adoption of mass notifications, the fact that individuals demand a certain level of safety and security while they're on job site, at a, uh, at a site, at a retail site they're visiting, at a, a campus, those kind of things, that, you know, to be able to provide that level of safety is a competitive advantage a lot of times. Uh, it's, um, you know, helps attract employees, uh, satisfied employees, you know, those kind of things, to know that employer has a really their, their, their uh, um, well-being in at uh, hand. So a little bit basically I, I mentioned that kind of the overarching code is NFPA 72. It was added in 2010 and actually the chapter that's focused on mass notification highlights the alert beacon. It's pictured as an audiovisual device that's uh, also ADA compliant which is a big part of the codes. So the, uh, the alert beacon is one piece that helps you to very cost effectively retrofit your facilities 
but also works in, con uh, in uh, concert with all the integrations that we do. To bring it all together, the, the, the real value of what, what we're able to put in your hands is a single point of activation, whether it's your existing text messaging solution, whether it's a panic button, our mobile app, uh, another mobile app uh, for another uh, incident management program that you're they're running, uh, pretty much able to activate any different way that you would like uh, with any kind of controls, even uh, desktop-based activations, web interface, all those. We're able to integrate all the notification assets, will be, which will be the focus of the second half of the webinar here, and then we can fill in the gaps with things like the alert beacons, something that's very innovative for mass notification that, that you're not going to find anywhere else. So this gives you an overall view of the Alerta system. We're able to get the messages into the system, activate through wired or wireless connections. So depending on your building environments, uh, your networks, whether there is a network or not, we've got both uh, traditional wireless Wi-Fi data, uh, power Ethernet support, as well as uh, uh, proprietary type wireless setups using uh, FM or uh, paging type systems. We get that message out to all the devices, either the, the devices we manufacture like the alert beacon, the LED scrolling marquee, the outdoor uh, high-powered speaker array, the panic button, whether it's those devices or all our integrations, which we're going to talk about, desktop, uh, mobile, digital signage, cable TV, fire panel, indoor PA systems, all those kind of things. We're able to get that message out, and it's going to be exactly the same. It's going to be coordinated, and uh, you're going to be able to decide where that message gets delivered based upon what information needs to go to those individuals. So here I'd like to get a little bit deeper into each of the integrations so you can kind of understand how we can bring a lot of these assets together. So uh, the text-to-speech technology is very innovative. It's, you know, individuals with all the GPSs the, uh, within their phone, garments, those kind of things, have gotten used to receiving messaging from a text-to-speech generation uh, and directions. So that's kind of built into culture a little bit now, which is interesting. It, the text-to-speech allows you to get away from pre-recorded messages, which fall short of providing people with specific information. Also, you know, you can only plan so many scenarios. Uh, your top, maybe tornado, evacuate, lockdown, those kind of things. But wouldn't you like to be able to give additional information that's spoken over the, the PA system or the fire system, those kind of things, to be able to tell somebody, hey, there's an active shooter and it's a lockdown these are the steps we're doing, or, you know, it's a tornado, go to uh, these specific locations and really target that messaging. That allows you to, uh, you know, accommodate for all those specific uh, events and also send them in the right direction. The way we integrate with different PA systems is kind of the common denominator is a audio input. So just as if you could go up to any of these systems and plug a microphone in, you can plug our text-to-speech capability into that control, turn that amplifier on, turn it off, um, deliver that message, control that by plugging in basically through the microphone port. It's a little bit more complex than that, uh, but that gives you an idea of how we integrate into some of these old school uh, PA systems, voice systems that have maybe been around for quite a long time, but we can pull in and make a party emergency notification system. The other one, which everybody kind of shies away from, but the codes really open up, uh, the ability is to use the PA system associated with your fire system. Not all of them have, have uh, PA systems, but the ones that do, let's put them to work for mass notification. When you hit send from either your personal notification uh, service or the Alertus system or an incident management system they have integrated with Alertus, uh, whenever you hit send, we're able to put that text-to-speech not no notification over the PA systems in the fire alarms. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to have somebody run up to that, somebody designated to speak over that PA system somebody that might talk too fast, deliver the incorrect message, um, you know, be unintelligible is the, the fire voice term. You want to be able to control that, so you're able to control that specifically with our text-to-speech integration with the fire panel. And you don't have to have somebody go up to that fire panel. You're, you're activating that uh, from, from uh, your, your, your user interface of choice. And again, here, uh, you know, the public address system allows organizations to leverage existing public address systems. Uh, centralized control, and then extends your emergency notification systems by linking voice systems with things like our alert beacons, our outdoor giant voice high-powered speaker arrays, uh, the PA systems, LED marquees, so you've got a consistent message going out. I mentioned the out outdoor voice. 
a lot of our customers will have these systems deployed. Uh, some of the early choices were to put, put these on outdoor spaces to cover. Uh, if you've got those in place today, we can integrate with our text-to-speech, and we actually will slow down the text-to-speech notification. We'll put the appropriate level of pauses so we can accommodate any kind of echoes or, uh, you know, those kind of things. So, you know, with that, we also take that uh, um, pre-recorded need out of that so we can place those, uh, those pauses exactly where they need to be. And we also take the human aspect out of it, where you might get somebody on there that talks too fast, doesn't pause between their their uh, their words, and ends up with an unintelligible message, something that's just echoing out. So it allows you to control quality of that messaging. Uh, if you do not have high-powered speaker arrays today, we have a solution. We can provide that as a fully integrated solution for you. So if you've got an outdoor area, or whether it's a parking lot, an entire campus, we have a solution that can, can cover the, those areas and, and ensure that people are safe. Because uh, let's face it, if it's if a major threat you're looking at is a tornado, if you've got a very large parking lot, somebody's out on the other end of the uh, parking lot, you want to get to the notice to them as quick as possible to get inside when there's a tornado alert. They may look around and understand that there's bad weather, but you want to be able to provide that information so they can act accordingly. The next one, which is an uh, increased focus of ours and an area that we're putting a lot of focus, people are moving in and moving along around facilities with a lot of uh, Wi-Fi connected iPads, Android devices, their own bring your own devices, Android, uh, iOS, uh, smartphones uh, through Apple, Google, Samsung, you know, all those different, different products. Well, that's an excellent way to notify. We're able to run on those different platforms to be able to notify individuals both in your facilities and then also if they're outside of your facilities using the ability to push that uh, notification to their, um, their smartphone or mobile device. So this greatly enhances and expands your ability to notify people. You can either have your individuals uh, download the mobile app from the App Store, which if you do a quick search, you'll see our Alertus uh, app there, both our uh, receiving and activation app. So the activation app is for you as a, uh, as a emergency manager. Recipient map uh, is for receiving uh, the messaging, those kind of things. Uh, that app can also be integrated with existing apps that you have as an organization. So it's been it's getting very popular on college campuses to provide a like basically a portal app that was the web portal of say the 90s where you were bringing all the information together, scheduling classes, building maps, bus schedules, all those kind of things. But now they're bringing it into a mobile accessible app because that's the way people are choosing to access a lot of that information today. Well, we're also able to embed our code and capability to be able to push a message to that. So we're able to integrate on a level that allows you that to, to push messaging to apps that your users have a reason to download. So that's key in, in getting adoption. If they've got a reason to download your, your campus organization app to access certain uh, capabilities or, or logins, well, you can also then, with that, bring them in as part of your emergency mass notification system. So the integration on mobile is really exciting, and there's, there's a lot of development and a lot of capabilities that are, are coming in that, that area. The next one, which is huge for our customers, generally we'll, we'll, we'll work with customers that have digital signage systems. If you're lucky enough that it's the same digital signage system across the, the, the campus, that, that makes it real easy. If you've got multiple digital signage systems based upon when the building was installed, who manages it, which department, the good news is with Alertus, that's still easy. Uh, we're able to integrate with all the major players out there. We're able to. Uh, we've got a few of the major ones listed here. Uh, Visix uh, is a big, is a popular one that comes up very often. But we're able to integrate many different levels, whether it's taking it over from a centralized managed capability, whether it's taking over by the, by each player, each individual sign, or whether it's uh, taking over based upon, you know, content delivered from the cloud. We're seeing this more and more that, you know, you're able to get a cloud-based service for digital signage, work on your, your messaging, get that all set up, send it to the different signs, all in a cloud-based service. We're even able to integrate when you've got a, a cloud-based service sign, uh, serving your digital signage. And then lastly, you know, we all we all know there's these uh, impromptu digital signage systems, which uh, somebody will take a flat screen, put an old laptop behind those kind of things. We have a solution for that as well, uh, similar to our uh, desktop capability. So, you know, no matter whether low tech, high tech, or improvised, or 
um, planned out your digital signage system is, we can integrate and bring all those signs into your in your mes messaging network for emergencies. The other, the other integration which I really want to talk a lot about, which provides a lot of flexibility and in integration into some of your older systems, some of your more building-based systems, is a contact closure integration. Contact closure is a common denominator for building-based systems. It's basically an on and off switch. It's a light switch. Whenever the, the light switch is off, nothing's occurring. When it turns on, we trigger a system, uh, an activity in our system and or if we're triggering a building-based system, we're turning a light system, light switch on in another system that'll cause a, a reaction. So an example of that to kind of bring that bring that into reality is with access control systems. They are very much contact closure driven. So we can set up so that you've got a click check mark or you can build as part of a preset that will trigger a contact closure to your access control system in a specific building to lock or unlock those doors in the event of that, that emergency. You can program that to set up. So suddenly your lockdowns can also include triggering your access control system to go into a different mode where doors that were originally unlocked become unlocked. Uh, any of the magnets that are holding doors allow those to close. Those kind of things. So you can really start to get deeper into access control and, and integrations there. Uh, things like water leak triggers. If you've got sensors throughout your, your facility, we also see this with manufacturing. You've got a lot of sensors. Uh, any of those sensors trigger, we can then trigger a corresponding alert to alert the right people at the right time so that they can respond to that. We've also uh, integrated and worked with uh, healthcare facilities that monitor refrigerators. So if they hit a certain level of temperature, whether it starts to climb and the refrigerator needs to be serviced, we're able to send that message out and save what could be very uh, costly or valuable uh, materials, those kind of things in those refrigerators. So we're able to get really uh, uh, interesting and exciting with the different integrations that we can do. And you can build any kind of scenario to send that out. Uh, also, uh, things like gate systems throughout your campus or facility may be uh, contact center or contact uh, closure driven. So you're able, you're able to either, in an evacuation, open up all those gates to allow evacuation to be, be smooth or lock down, close those gates. You know, you've really got a, a lot of uh, options there. Beyond contact closure is also an RSS feed. So that's the next level. RSS feed would be a web-based uh, feed. It basically goes from system to system through your, your, your network, uh, through the internet, that kind of thing. Similar kind of integrations. Um, you just need more modern systems to be able to drive that, but we're able to read those as well. So think about if you think about it, we're able to hold and integrate to anything that, that could be very old, that appears to be a standalone system, all the way through to something that's very modern that provides a lot of the web and connected capabilities. Uh, we're able to activate that. So it doesn't have to be all brand new assets. Uh, we can we can bring a lot of those into the fold through the different uh, integrations we have. The last part, which I'm sure a lot of our, our customers on this call are familiar with, and what I've been alluding to is interoperability partners. Uh, you're able to activate the alert system not only from our different modes, but also from third-party applications. Uh, groups like Everbridge, Rave uh, Mobile Safety, Blackboard, ERMS, we'll send we're now Mission Mode, uh, Regroup, all of those have worked with us and developed to our API. So you can actually bring up in their interface not only are you sending all of your, your messages to your individuals, uh, either text or email or phone calls, but you can also bring up the Alertus interface within that and then select our devices, our locations that are, are facility-based to give you that one point of activation. A lot of these also we've developed to their API. So if you're more comfortable and want to activate from Alertus, we can also take that same message and cascade that through text messaging services that your organization uses. So either way, we're able to provide integration so that all of your major modes of notification, facility-based and personal notification services, can be touched off how you want it, how your organization operates, and in the most efficient means possible, so that the same exact message goes out to everybody that, that you've designated. So at this point, I want to get into the demo. I'll show you a little bit about how easy it is to actually activate all these different modes. In the past, I've shown the uh, uh, panic button activations, but I want to get a little bit deeper into activating a message so that you can see how uh, that is activated, how, how easy it is for the, the user administrator 
uh, once all these integrations are set up, to select each of these, build out their notifications, and send those out. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, log in here, and I've got uh, full administrative uh, credentials. You can build credentials based upon the person you want to activate, whether they just have the ability to activate presets, certain locations, those kind of things. I've got full open activation capability. So here we're presented with emergency activation. This will activate every device in your network. Uh, preset activation. This will activate your presets. So any of the pre-planned scenarios and, and that you've created, whether they're um, you know an all clear, uh, bomb threat, you know code red could be a, a fire type thing, uh, lockdown, those kind of things. You can have those all set. And I'll go ahead and jump back into the presets, and we'll activate from here when I do my all clear. And then lastly, we've got a custom activation. This allows you to build it on the fly. Generally, we suggest that customers build most of their, their scenarios ahead of time so you can tweak them on the fly. This one actually allows and shows all the different capabilities that, that you're able to activate and how easy it is to activate some of the other things. So here we've got your message. Let's go ahead and issue a bomb threat. Uh, you've got the ability to target who you want that to go to, whether you want to go to specific uh, locations, buildings, or all. Uh, you can select specific units, or you can use the, uh, the map mode, which allows you to, to see, well, I've got one beacon here. Uh, looks like about the lobby area, a bunch of desktops within this building. You can uh, zoom out to your campus uh, and see the different buildings within your campus. Uh, activate based upon uh, different uh, circles, uh, rectangles, those kind of things. Or let's go back. I just want to um, do a full activation so we've got all here. Next, you've got duration. So this is just a demo, I'm going to do two minutes. And then we can uh, build either uh, custom alert profiles, which select, pre-select all these uh, different services that you have, different integrations, let's call it. Or you can do a, a full custom uh, notification. So here with the alert services, I want to include an alert beacon. We've got uh, Twitter. Uh, I also want to activate cable TV, my desktop alert, digital signage. We've got web phone integration here. You can also add check marks for you know your lockdown, which will trigger a contact closure, uh, any of those different things. So we've got all those different things that are, are, there's a lot that goes into setting this up, and we can help you with every step of the way and, uh, in setting those up. But once they're set up and the linkages are made, it's as easy as selecting a checkbox and adding those either to your presets or your, your custom message while you're going. So here we've got the alert beacon. I want to I want to include that here. I'm going to do low for for a very short period of time, uh, 10 seconds, uh, and then uh, I want to go to silent so we can hear that. Some of the other items uh, we can activate, like uh, the LED marquees. We want to include the text to speech. Here's where I'd be able to en enable the door lock control, which is uh, on the, the room here, where I could uh, lock that down. You can create different lockdowns, those kind of things. Also, we can integrate into any sirens, outdoor strobe, indoor strobes. Uh, if your fire panel is, is labeled alert or there's no label at all on your strobes, you can use those strobes and activate those uh, through the fire panel as well as part of your emergency notification. So you can really, you can really see here, when you get into the details of uh, activating either custom activation or you actually use the same screen to build out your presets, it's a matter of uh, clicking each box in which you want to activate. I'm going to go ahead and continue. This will uh, give you a, uh, a you know, message, basically, are you sure? We've got things like we're showing uh, you know, the integrations. We're, we're sending something to uh, Twitter. We're sending something to the, the VoIP phones. We've got uh, our uh, alert beacons, desktops, all that kind of thing. Uh, I want to go ahead and activate that. You'll see the activation goes active along the bottom. Uh, that, that, that confirms the activation, uh, and then uh, that, that will then uh, take over all the devices in the alert system, and then uh, it will also uh, activate the, uh, the text-to-speech capability, which we've selected. In this message, you'll see the bomb threat across the bottom. Bomb threat has been reported on the premises. Please proceed immediately to the nearest available exit and vacate the building. So the next one, uh, I want to go ahead and, uh, you know, after you send that message, you want to be able to send it all clear so that everybody that's uh, associated or experiencing emergency knows that that message has been, a bomb threat has been, been uh, sent and is that the emergency has been averted. Please proceed immediately to the nearest available legs and vacate the building. 
So I want to go ahead and uh, set the bomb clear. threat has been reported on the premises. Please proceed immediately to the nearest available exit and vacate the building. A bomb threat has been reported on the premises. Please proceed immediately to the nearest available and exit and vacate the building. So that will uh, we'll switch everything over to the all clear. And then uh, now we know the tragedy is averted. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, cancel. I'll go ahead and cancel that out. And that'll all clear. through. The emergency condition is over. Return to normal activities. Now, uh, one of the things I noticed, uh, and uh, this time it was planned, uh, the all desktop clear. didn't activate the as part of all this. So uh, I'm curious, you know, let's go back and uh, let's look at the reports and find out, you know, what's going on there. Is it, uh, you know, is it connected? Is it not? What's going on? Uh, and obviously your system would have a report of uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of tens of thousands of desktops reporting back. So the reports would give you a, a view of every device connected, how many activated, how many were active, how many went active, those kind of things. You can bring up the reports. So let's, let's look at the bomb threat real quick. You can see all the different uh, things we activated, desktop alert, uh, cable TV, VoIP phone, uh, Twitter, all those things. So let's go ahead and look at our device activations uh, and see, see what we got. It looks like all three of our alert beacons went off, but uh, our desktops didn't. So, uh, you know, I can also look at confirmations if, uh, if we want to look at confirmations. We can look at user recipients if there were desktops that, that activated. Or what we can do is uh, we can go in and look at, the, at our, uh, our reports, our device status, and see if, well, is that desktop on? Is it online? Is, what's, what's going on here? So I'm going to click over to device status, and it looks like, looks like that desktop's uh, not connected right now. Uh, 470 minutes ago, so what would that be like, uh, I don't know, maybe five or six hours ago, it, it became that, that desktop was no longer connected. We can see where it was connected, so we could go track that down. You could see the same with the alert beacons, if any of them were, were, were uh, disconnected, and really find some, uh, some good statistics on that. Um, so let me just take a quick glance at it. Looks like the screen, screen's on. But it looks like the, the, the PC wasn't booted up. So, you know, problem solved. If that was any of your other devices, you would notify, you would notice that, um, and uh, be able to address that on the fly. So, um, you know, we're bringing that back up. So, so you can get to see kind of how um, a little bit of the uh, the reporting can be used to make uh, managing your system more efficient. Those reports can be emailed to you uh, on a regular interval. They can be uh, you know, managed uh, appropriately so that, they, that if devices go offline for a period of time, you can be notified, all those different things. So uh, it also looks like uh, the, the PC is on now. I'll just verify. Um, looks like, and generally for, uh, for these, the uh, desktop is in, in a mode, mode where uh, where it automatically boots the 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 alertus, uh, the alertus uh, desktop, but this one being a demo system, we didn't have it auto boot. We might have had a uh, outage or power outage over the over the evening. Bring that active. That that, that activates the uh, the desktop and it's it's back up and uh, and running for you there. So we're able to uh, you know troubleshoot and bring things back back online as as uh, you know on a real time basis. So from there, uh, that gives you a good idea of the integrations, the uh, how how we'll activate those and manage those. Uh, you can either manage them on the fly with custom activation, or you build your presets the same way when you have a little bit more time to think it out. Those kind of things. But once everything's all connected up, it's very simple in uh, point and click uh, to select each of your notification modes and uh, location which you're, you you want to send those. So uh, it makes it very easy. And then you've got all the reporting at your fingertips to be able to uh, uh, manage the system, report on those messages, uh, everything uh, that, that you need there to, uh, to manage the system. So at that point, uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, go ahead and uh, turn it over to uh, Jamie. We've had some questions coming in, I believe, and uh, also any uh, new questions that might, might come up, uh, go ahead and uh, uh, submit those and look forward to, to running through those. 
Great. Thanks so much, Ryan. Uh, we have had a number of questions come in already. Um, if you haven't yet, uh, please do submit any questions you may have um, in the chat box, in the questions box, and we'll get to as many of those as we have time for. Um, so we'll, we'll dive right in. Uh, Ryan, our first question uh, really kind of goes back to um, the Americans with Disabilities Act compliance. Um, this particular individual says, our organization must be able to alert the blind, deaf, and hard of hearing in the event of an emergency. What types of solutions does Alertus provide that accommodates these individuals? Excellent question. Uh, you know, the, the solutions provide, and the key with ADA accessibility is audiovisual, because you've got differently abled individuals that, that need to receive that message, whether it's a visual notification or audio. Um, you could, with some of these integrations, you could take over the PA system that's in, in that building. Uh, if you're using your integration with a fire panel and those strobes are marked as alert versus fire, you could have those strobes go off and the announcements going over the PA system. Also, you know, if you've got specific individuals that are in, in certain areas, they, they also need to provide a little bit extra layer of, of notification. I mean, maybe just a, a clear strobe going off isn't going to provide the level of detail that, that you need to serve that, that individual. You can also uh, deploy some more alert beacons, LED marquees, those kind of things where the alert beacon actually, uh, and one of the reasons why it was pictured in NFPA 72 as a device is it provides both audiovisual notification all in one, plus it provides detailed information. Uh, you can go up and, and read that, or you know, if, if you're unable to read, you're able to listen to the, uh, the message being spoken over the PA system. Uh, you're able to hear the sounder on the alert beacon, uh, those kind of things. So it really allows you to customize and deploy the alert system how you want to serve your, your population. And also, you know, as much as we want to uh, deploy and, and equip a facility completely 100% via ADA accessibility, sometimes budgets get in the way. So with the alert beacon, you can very cost effectively retrofit certain locations to provide that extra level of notification to get things started. Uh, so it's, you know, while the goal is complete coverage, you know, the system that Alertus provides allows you to build that coverage as budget allows, as priorities are able, you're able to uh, put in place, those kind of things. So a couple things on audiovisual, but also how we can grow with your organization and individuals with uh, accessibility needs. Great. Um, our next question gets into um, a specific Alertus product. Um, so Ryan, you did a really nice job of going through um, some very specific integration um, opportunities that Alertus provides. Can you delve into specifically the fire alarm interface, how it works, um, how that information um, comes into the system, and how it goes out through the text-to-speech? Oh, okay. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, that's a great question because this the fire panel is one that, I guess, as, as kids, we were always told to stay away from it, you know, the, uh, you know and, and that still kind of perpetuates. But with the code changes, uh, with the ability to integrate, uh, that fire panel really becomes more open for especially mass notification. So we can integrate with the fire panel on uh, many different le levels. Uh, common denominator is contact closure, so we can turn strobes on, those kind of things, from a simple contact closure. Uh, the, if it's got a voice capability, we're able then to uh, speak that message over those speakers. So we're taking those speakers that might have been installed years ago that don't get used at all, and we're putting them to work for an emergency notification. Uh, the third is an integration, and this is really exciting, where we were able to read the events coming out of the panel and create customized emergency notifications and deliver those messages accordingly. So we can actually monitor a fire panel, and if it's important to know whether it's a smoke detector that went off or if somebody pulled a pulse station and where that pulse station might be located and then created a corresponding message, we're able to receive that message, interpret that, and then do a uh, message based upon how you want to deliver that message, what information content you want in that uh, through the Alertus system. So we're able to integrate on those le all those levels, and you know we're using things that are are innate to every fire panel from when they started building fire panels, basically. So uh, it's a it's a really accessible integration that is a lot easier than people perceive. I mean, people perceive that it's very complex to to anything you do to touch the fire panel. And that's really changing, uh, and we're able to integrate in ways that isn't very difficult and complex, but is extremely valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, if you've joined uh, some of our webinars with uh, Washington University of St. Louis, they've deployed that on campus and, and increased their coverage significantly. 
Uh, a couple of our military bases did that as well, where they had voice within the system, which is required for a lot of the new buildings and revamping um, based upon the UFC code. You know, number of, we're, we're having a number of organizations that are really we're demystifying the fire panel and we're able to connect into that and provide a lot of results and capability to them. Great. Our next question uh, really gets into um, authentication. So uh, the question is, is there a way to authenticate input, for example, using an AD login, a certificate, um, certain IP restrictions that would prevent individuals who are not necessarily authorized to send an alert from triggering a series of alarms or notifications? Yeah, absolutely. We take that very seriously. Uh, we do have an uh, Active Directory integration to be able to coordinate your Windows login password with password that's used for Alertis. Uh, so you're able to, that, and then you can create different user restrictions, those kind of things. So you can really manage that, that password so that, you know, when that emergency comes up, you can very quickly and efficiently, you, you know, have your password at your fingertips, not try to remember what well, was it, you know, four months ago when I learned, learned to use the Alertis system. So we're able to authenticate with that password. If we're being activated downstream, your uh, security controls that uh, govern either your personal notification system, your um, incident management system, those kind of things would apply as well. So if you've already put some of those things in place, then you've got that, that control. We've uh, implemented a lot of security around man-in-the-middle attacks to be able to, you know, certificates, those kind of things to make sure that somebody can't hack into our system and activate uh, an erroneous message. Uh, we also track uh, within the reporting on exactly where that message has been activated who the login was, what their IP address was, the, the machine that they were on, all these kind of details that would help you find somebody if they actually they got malicious access uh, to the system as well. Uh, lastly, you're able to control you know, different activation modes, uh, whether it's through the web interface, if you wanted to, to uh, lock it down so that you could only access the web interface within your organization from a PC that's that's uh, authorized through either a VPN or uh, connected directly to your organization with your, your network and your buildings in, in your uh, facilities, you could put our entire system behind your firewall, in which case you would have to actually be in the building as well as have a login and be on a, on a, uh, a logged into a PC that, that you have access to uh, within, that, within that building. So, you know, there are a lot of different levels of control that you can implement based upon how we set up our system within IT. Uh, and we can talk through that. There's pros and cons to locking it way down. If you lock it way down, you're very secure. You have to be in the building or, or logged in on a PC. Um, you know, that, that might make it more difficult to activate while you're out on an uh, off-site meeting, uh, potentially, or you're at uh, a conference or something like that. So there's always pros and cons that you want to weigh. But we are able to uh, provide a lot of that security capability that, that you're looking for, depending on you know, the level of access you need. Great. So uh, we do have time for one or two more questions. Uh, really quickly, I'd like to um, turn your attention to the screen here um, and just mention a few upcoming webinars that we have. Uh, we've covered a lot of these specific products um, over this particular webinar. Um, in September, we will have a webinar focusing on the fire alarm integration. If that's something you're interested in, I would highly, highly recommend attending this webinar for um, kind of a deeper dive into that specific solution. Likewise, we will be focusing on kind of our flagship product, the Alert Beacon, in October. Um, and then in November, one of our newer products, uh, the Alertus app, uh, looking at some of the mobile applications uh, that are available as well. If you'd like additional information uh, or you want to register for one of those upcoming webinars, uh, just uh, go to the website, www.alertus.com forward slash Alertus webinar series. Uh, also, just wanted to mention this webinar is being recorded. If you'd like a copy of that recording, just send us an email at marketing at alertus.com. Um, and finally, we have uh, lots of additional information that you can find on our website, www.alertus.com, um, and then some contact information there at the bottom as well. Now, I see we've had a couple more questions come in. Uh, Ryan, the next question really gets back into um, some of the compliance, some of the codes and mandates that we were discussing earlier. And uh, this particular question um, is really asking about how the Alertus system complies specifically with NFPA 72. Yep, absolutely. Uh, that's a, a topic that we could probably actually do an entire webinar on. Uh, but 
specifically, we'll get into the, the, the core aspects of the Alertis system and, and what uh, NFPA is looking for in, in, uh, in Chapter 24. So one is your uh, Tier 1 notification capabilities. This is, you know, audio, visual, in your facility, something that will get your, your attention. Uh, it could be the, uh, the beacon going off, flashing and sounding, providing the ADA accessibility uh, piece of it as well, providing that notification in a very uh, in-your-face kind of way. So that's kind of a Tier 1, your in-building notification. Then your Tier 2 is the kind of being able to reach your individuals within the building outside of just hitting a, a speaker system, a PA system, a fire system. And that, that could be, uh, you know, activating uh, a computer desktop, which would pop up a message to every individual that's logged into a computer in every office. Uh, it could be also uh, sending out a mobile notification to smartphones, which is going to the individuals. So that's a Tier 2 notification. Tier 3 and Tier 4, a lot of your first responder type things. Uh, but, alerted, you know, the, the codes really require at least one Tier 1 and tier two, one Tier 2. Uh, the alerting system is really focused on providing as many of those Tier 1 and Tier 2 capabilities. So with our integrations, we can integrate to the fire panel. We can use those PA systems. We can turn those strobes on if they're labeled appropriately. And, you know, when we get into more code discussions, we can talk more about that. Uh, we can set off our alert beacons. So all those are your, your Tier 1 uh, LED marquees, all, you know, it just, it, your outdoor giant voice, you know, all that kind of stuff, tier one, tier two, your mobile apps, uh, integration with personal recipient. We're, we're able to really, if you go down, boil it down, hit almost all of those with all these integrations to provide a really fully well-rounded uh, compliant solution for NFPA 72. Fantastic. Our next question uh, is really jumping back to um, the question prior. Um, dealing with um, authenticity, so making sure you have an authorized person actually sending out emergency alerts. Mm -hmm. uh, the question really gets into um, whether there's an escalation mechanism available. So, for example, are you able to trigger new actions um, to sort of override an initial action, or can you have someone actually approve an action before it takes place or occurs? Okay, those, those are really good questions around uh, uh, you know, use, activation, mm -hmm. Uh, currently with our system, you can override if, someone, if you find a message that, that has been sent erroneously, uh, somebody uh, selected the wrong message, you can, at, at any of those that are authorized to do so, can override, cancel that, uh, and reissue a uh, corrective message. Um, now, the, the next one around, you know, having different levels, you can have different levels of authorization to send messaging. We haven't yet gotten to a, well, if you're at a lower level, you have to have both send the message and a concurrence from a, a higher level uh, individual. That's a really actually a, a very good idea, uh, and we'll, have to, we'll start to explore that a little bit more with other organizations to see if that, that'll fit, but we haven't implemented that today in our system. So right now, it, you know, everybody that's able to activate, manage messages for, for your location is able to see the uh, active messages. If, you're able, if you've got the controls, you're able to cancel those, reissue. Uh, to, to give you an idea of how, how you can manage that. And then if somebody issues a message that shouldn't, you can track them down to which computer they're on, which location, all that, those kind of things as well. Uh, so, so hopefully, if, if there's a little bit more questions you want to go into a little bit more detail, uh, we'd love to get, get a quick discussion with a sales engineer together uh, so that we can really delve deeper into that with you. Uh, but that's, that's kind of the, the top level, how, how, how messages uh, flow and how you can, uh, can manage those uh, based upon your, your credentials. Great. And that's, uh, that's about all we have time for today as far as uh, Q&A. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us for the webinar. Again, if there are any follow-up questions um, you know, or you would like a recording of this specific webinar, please do email us at marketingalertus.com. And uh, thank you again for joining us. Have a great afternoon.